Now I'm going to show you guys three of my main tips that I have for designing any garden and in this case a shade garden. This design was inspired from a comment on my last video. I'd asked y'all some suggestions for a garden you would like to see designed and I had a comment that of course I had to make a video on because it was my aunt. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the very first thing I do when somebody asks me to design an area is I'm going to spend several minutes simply reading what they asked me to do. So let's go ahead and pull up that comment and read it together. Okay, she said, I would, I'd like a small garden area that can withstand shade and as low maintenance. This area is three by six feet and it is, it is the space in between two con concrete carports. And she showers me in compliments and then she tells me that she likes yellow, bright pink, and some purple. So that is a really great starting point to have some guidelines to build on this design. So there are three huge tips that I like to do um, when designing a garden. So the very first one is I'm actually going to get all of my information down in one place. And for me, there's nothing better to use than Canva. Now, this user did not tell me the growing zone. If I was doing this design for a client, I would definitely ask what zone they're in, but I already know where this garden's located at. This is my shade garden. I'm going to kind of add some things that she had told me about this, this area. I know where it's going at. I know it's full, sh uh, full shade. I know my colors. I'm really ready now to start picking out my plants. Um, but first, what I'm going to do before I pick my plants out is I'm actually going to build this shape out. Now, she told me it's three foot by six foot, and I know she's wrong because I've been there. It probably is three foot wide, but it's definitely longer than six foot because the carport area that she's talking about, um, basically, it's almost a whole car length. And then also, there's an area in front of where the cars are at. Um, so we are actually going to do like an L-shaped garden. Now this is going to be a garden that is really going to be for the person driving past it and the person pulling into this area. That viewpoint is predominantly going to be from the road. So I am thinking in my head, where do I want to have the most movement, the most color? Where do I want your eye to go to? And there is an area in the very front of the garden that I'm thinking, but also between where the house is and the carport ends, there is a little bit of an area there to add in some plants. So I am going to be adding that into the design and seeing what we can do to make that area just a little bit more pretty. Now where she lives at is already a beautiful place in the mountains. So I'm just gonna try and think of how I can add add in as a part of taking away from the beauty that's already there but this area right here is gonna be like my main wow focus for sure be really careful with this area and this area and I don't want to have a plant that is spewing out over the sides and I want this to be beautiful, but not cluttered, where she has to be worried if there is a snake in this little garden area, because where she lives at in the mountains, snakes can kind of be a bit of an issue. So I'm just keeping that in mind. I'm not gonna be putting something that's gonna vine over and go under the carport area. Um, also, they, they're not gonna be able to go out there and constantly maintain this edge. This is gonna be a plant, and fertilize a few times a year type of a garden. So just keep that in mind as I'm thinking about what I wanna build out in here. So let's go ahead and shop for some plants. My, like, besides using Canva to design a garden, I would say one of my biggest secrets for designing a garden, any garden, but especially a specific, like, shaded garden area, is to go to EdenBrothers.com and then really use their website for what it was intended to be used for. So in this case, I am already on a plant. Let's go back to the main screen. So I'm just gonna click EdenBrothers.com. Okay, this is their main screen. I have a problem. Let's see what solutions they have. So I'm gonna be shopping for solutions and just kind of looking throughout here and I noticed it had a shaded garden area so let's start there it's a great place to start I see that I have a bu 
bunch of things to choose from here. I'm not really loving this little section right here because it doesn't match what she wants, but I go down to here and I see this beautiful iris. Now, I do see this beautiful foxglove, but this is not a bulb. It is a direct sow plant that also needs stratification, which is just a cold period for it to grow. My end is not the sew and thin and steak type of person. This iris is a super low maintenance plant and this is something that would do much better for her and the garden. And this is just a beautiful blend of different purples and yellows. This is gonna be so, so beautiful. I Now that I know that I'm gonna have this iris here, what I'm gonna do is go back to my Canva Okay, so now that I have the perfect purple plant picked out, I'm just gonna go through this color list and kind of shop around a little bit. So I'm gonna hop on over to Fast Growing Trees and I'm gonna see if I can find something there. Now I am thinking that she's gonna need some type of thriller that's gonna go in that front air we talked about earlier. So I'm kind of just keeping that in mind when I'm looking for plants. So here I can click yellow, great, and let's see if I can go down to my sun requirements. And they don't really have much off of the full sun or full shade area. So now that I have the color selected, I'm just going to kind of do some due diligence to try and see if I can find something that might work in, even in this area. Now it doesn't get a lot of sunlight, but it does get kind of like a decent amount of sunlight. So I'm kind of just keeping that in mind, like a part sun. A part sun plant would probably do just fine here especially since it's not a flowering type of a plant and this right here caught my eye a forsythia is so beautiful it will just catch your eye and just so captivating so this is going to be kind of like a mix between my thriller one that's exciting and also a filler it's gonna be a pretty big plant as well so let's go ahead and make this my yellow plant so i'm going to go back to my canva and I'm gonna add that into my yellow area. And now the pink plant was kind of tricky. So I was looking for pink as well. Let me just go back to fast growing so I can start over and show you guys kind of how I do this. Um, I'm going back to shrubs and let's see if I can type in a pink and see what kind of pink ones. There's a lot of really pink ones, but I know roses are not gonna do good in a low light area. Sometimes when you shop for hydrangeas, it can say full sun on it, but that's not really the case for most of them and especially where you plant them at. So here in Florida, hydrangeas can grow very nicely in almost a completely shaded area. I have an area in my garden that gets two or three hours of sunlight, maybe a day. And then I have an area right beside it and it gets like four to six. And the hydrangeas that get the least amount of sun do the best. They are substantially larger, they have more blooms. So depending on where you're at in the country, the light requirements are a little bit different. And hydrangeas, they can really do quite well with not a whole lot of sun. And I'm over here looking at this beautiful hydrangea. I have never seen this variety before ever and I am absolutely captivated by it. It is called vanilla strawberry and it is so beautiful now I have seen hydrangeas that can get this like I call it like a rusty type burnt color on them like a rusted or a burnt blush to it it is a very like mauve type color and what I don't love it because here in Florida, whenever you see that color on a hydrangea, it is only because they have literally burnt the petals because there's too much sun. So I don't love that effect on the hydrangeas, but this is a very, very beautiful, soft pink, and I, I love this. Now, my aunt is not the number one gardener in the whole entire world, but what I think we can do is go ahead and pop these in and I would love to train these to be a lollipop tree and I'll give y'all a picture of what a lollipop hydrangea looks like over here. That is just a very generic term for basically saying we're going to train this to grow into one stem and then it will go out. 
and most lollipop style plants are not grafted they are just simply trained into doing that and because I do go to her house several times throughout the year I can easily help to stake this up and this would be so beautiful as a lollipop. So even this first year of planting, there's not gonna be a whole lot to it until like spring or even next fall, but this is gonna be so beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this as my pink on here. And I like to put the actual name of the plant. Do you like to add some type of like structure throughout the garden? And a border plant that I think is just so beautiful is obviously a hosta. It does great with, with basically no sun. And there is this variety I just found this year that I absolutely love. I don't have any of these in my garden, um, but I would definitely love to. And I'll show you guys this absolutely beautiful hosta. So let's hop on over to Eden Brothers. Is this not the most beautiful little hosta you've ever seen in your whole life? So this is going to be my border plant. It does not get very big. It tells me right here, it's gonna to get to be about two foot wide. Okay, now I did add like a filler section, but this area of the garden here in this corner area, they're not really gonna have a whole lot of access to this area because this is kind of like on their side, but also their neighbor's side. And it's not the easiest to kind of get into. You would have to walk over this little ledge here. So whatever goes here needs to really fill in that whole area. And of course I love hostas and I noticed that Eden Brothers has a new variety that I think would go absolutely perfect here. So let me show you guys this, this one from Eden Brothers. It's okay. This one looks a lot like an elephant ear. Um, and I think it is so, so pretty. I, have any, I bet you they do have elephant ear. And now I was gonna add this hosta into there, but I have this plant in my garden and I really wish I had like 30 more. This is by far my favorite plant that I have. Absolutely beautiful. And let's go ahead and make this the filler. This is kind of like a filler and a thriller. Um, it's going to be so beautiful as like the contrast because their house is like this really beautiful tan color. And this is like a very dark purple, dark blackish color. And it's going to be so just captivating and beautiful. And um, I can already like see when you're looking at this space. Let me show y'all. Right this area is like the main area that you would see from the road this area i already know i'm gonna have that chrysanthia there that big yellow shrub very spiky very beautiful and i know back here that black elephant ear is gonna be so beautiful and then to see the yellow with the tall blackish purple plants in the background the chrysanthia has very spiky flowers and then the elephant ear has a very big, beautiful, soft, round type of a shape of a flower. And that contrast between the color and the texture is just going to be so pretty. And then in between that, I'm going to go ahead and add in the hydrangea, the iris, and the hostas to kind of just fill that area out. And that is just going to be so, so beautiful when it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with some shapes and I'm going to show you all what I put and where I put it there. Here's kind of what I have going around so far. Now this void area right here in the middle, that is where two cars park at. And this area over here is the area that you're going to see when you're looking from the road. So you're going to have this really beautiful border of that white hosta all along the edge to really define out that garden bed area. And right in the middle, you're going to have uh, the forsythia right there in the middle. It's going to be very spiky and it's going to have a lot of really good shape. And then clustered on both sides of this directly behind it, you're going to have the iris. And this is a blend of uh, yellow, cream, dark purple, and light purple. And you're going to have that all along the backside of it. An iris, just like any other bulb, does kind of have a curved spiky leaf coming out and they're going to have this beautiful light um, rounded petal coming out of that and 
iris flowers are just so so beautiful and that is going to look absolutely gorgeous on either side of this kind of just like tucked up right behind that big beautiful shrub and then in the very middle we're going to have three of those beautiful hydrangeas the strawberry vanilla it's going to be a white and a pink flower it's going to be a really nice rounded shrub to go right in the middle of this area and it's going to add, it's going to be able to fill in that area without overflowing. That's going to add a really nice balance of color and texture into that because the flowers are very rounded, very dainty, but the actual petal or the actual leaf of the hydrangea is kind of like this shape, but it does have kind of like a jagged teeth like around the border of it. And in the very back, there is going to be this beautiful elephant ear. It's a very dark, dark purple, and it's going to come up very high and just fill in this area. And it's going to have a lot of movement, a, very, a lot of soft movement in the background. Every time the wind blows, this plant just sways and it is just so, so beautiful. And that is gonna be very, very pretty in the back. And following that board, you're gonna have more of the hostas as not only a border but also a filler see how have these popped in around here as well and this little purple plant is the iris in the front we're also going to have some irises scattered out through the back side of it this is going to be so beautiful and i absolutely love the way this design has turned out i'll have the full plant list listed down below